Okay, so we've managed now to connect our database, you may recall, and we did that uh, in the bottom of the HTML by running this stuff here. Okay, so we've got our Firebase config and we've got our, we've initialized it and then sort of connected to our database, the library database, and then we've got con constant DB. So this is our database here. So how are we going to actually connect this to the database? Well, the first job is obviously to put in some data. So I've gone back to my Firebase database, I've clicked on database, and now what I've got is this idea of a collection. Well, a collection is actually the same as a sort of table in SQL. So I can create a table called uh, books. Here we go, so that's books, I do next. And you can see that now I've got this idea of an auto ID. So I can add my first book. Well, what does a book need? Well, first of all, it needs a title. Uh, let's say Oliver Twist. Okay, and then we want to add another field. Let's say author. Okay, and so the author, as we all know, is Charles Dickens. Now, I've got my two. Okay, so I've got my two books, okay, and so I've got my first book here. I'm going to get it's going to give itself an auto ID. Uh, the title is a type string Oliver Twist, and the second one is Charles uh, is the author Charles Dickens. So here it is, and you can see now that in the books I've got one book with this as its ID, and these are its attributes. Then author and the title, and notice they're in a different order to the one in which I put them in. This order doesn't matter, okay? So this is how I've got a collection here, and these are like the records. My unique field here, okay, and other fields over here. So this is very, very similar to the way in which SQL worked, okay? Except it's now going to be what we call no SQL, okay? And we'll see how we can link tables at a later date. So now we've got our first book. What about adding another record or document as it's called in here again auto id but again i need to now type in the title so let's call it emma okay and then i can add a field author and the author jane Eyre. there we go another field added again automatically producing an id and i've now got two of them okay so i've now got a collection of books Okay, and in the books you can see I've got two of them. Well, that's great. So let's see if our database can connect to our HTML using this DB constant. Okay, so I've moved back to my REPL. If I run it, obviously nothing happens. I can now go into JavaScript, however. Okay, and in JavaScript, what I want to do is paste in a little bit of code. Okay, so I'm going to put this bit of code in here. So I'm just going to put get data from oops slash slash get data from database okay and paste in the code now we just need to have a quick look at this code before we run it okay db connected on our first page collection books obvious dot get get all the books easy but then this key thing here dot then. Notice that I have not done what you might have expected, which is to write something like my books equals db.collection blah blah blah. I'm not setting it to a variable and there's a very good reason for that. This is because this database is somewhere else in the cloud and I do not know how long it's going to take for this to return my data so i have to use then this is a promise a method which returns a snapshot when it's ready and when it's got that snapshot it then trawls through each one and puts the data out to the console okay i'm just going to tab that across okay and the console is down here okay so when i run this i'm hoping now that this will run and the data from the database will appear in the console. And there it is, there's the data. Press run 
and I get my data. Author Jane Eyre, title Emma, title Oliver Twist, author. Notice it doesn't matter which order, order this is put out or which order the books are in, okay? But we've got our data, so we're proving now that the DB collection is going to work. So this is in JavaScript, okay? When this, as soon as we run this, we configure the database, the constant fires, and we get our constant, then the script runs. And once the script runs, it goes into here, puts these together, and then the first thing it does is get the database from get the data from the database using this here. Okay? And then it outputs it to there. So there we have it. We've now managed to get our data from Firestore at least towards our HTML page.